Hi, how you doing? My name's Johnny Miller. I'm a course developer and tutor down at Point Blank Online Music School. And uh, I'm here today to give you a little tutorial in Ableton Live. Today we're going to focus on making some beats um, that have a distinct flavor to them. Uh, we're going to look at a subgenre of ghetto house or booty house known as Duke. And uh, now this style of music really comes accompanied with a style of breakdancing known as footwork and uh, rising out from the Chicago underground scene throughout the noughties um, and has kind of broken into Europe in the last couple of years, uh, mainly thanks to artists like Addison Groove and Ramadan Man off the back of the dubstep scene. Um, the genre itself, the drums, the patterns that you'll find in the tracks are characterized by quite fast, skippy, syncopated drums. And uh, I'm going to show you how to program that kind of flavor um, into your tracks using Ableton Live and a couple of choice samples. Very first thing I did was load the 808 Classic uh, drum kit. And you'll find this up in the uh, live devices in the, uh, the kit folder for the drum rack. Um, so it's just the 808 Classic. There's a couple of other ones in there, and you could try maybe using uh, 909 sounds too, but I'm going to go for 808s. This give that classic electro sound that is used in Duke. And um, I've also got here a little vocal sample inside Simpler, and we'll look at that in a moment. And then lastly, I've got a pad sample, and I'm going to use that just to create some simple music a little bit later on. But I'm going to start with the beat. And uh, although there's no real template for making footwork or duke or that kind of sound, um, I'm going to go for a rhythm that you'll find in quite a few of the tracks. And, and also this kind of bleeds over into dubstep and uh, this, this rhythm has been used in quite a lot of dubstep tracks that sort of have that footwork duke influence in them. And it's very, very simple. Uh, kick on the one and then we're going to have a break of two sixteenths. That's going to take me through the first half of the bar. And then after the second half of the bar, I'm going to have uh, three sixteenths in between the kick and two sixteenths again. And now we get uh, this pattern here. If I just press play on that clip and put the click track on. And it's nice because the kick is a little bit offset to the one, the two, the three and the four. And it gives quite an energetic feel to the rhythm. Now, if I put in a clap on beat three of the bar, let's turn this click off now. That kind of nails the beat down. And that is the kind of fundamental rhythm that lies behind a lot of tracks in this scene. Again, it's not the only rhythm, there are variations. For instance, if I take the clap off the three and put a kick on there, and just kind of spread things out a bit. So let's just have uh, a 1 16th gap between the kicks at the end of the first half of the bar. That's another kind of variation on that rhythm. But it's all about having quite a busy kick pattern. Now, I'm gonna take that pattern there and uh, I'm just gonna quickly put that clap back in on the three. And I'm gonna take that pattern and just come out of draw mode. I'm gonna hit Command B and just highlight all those kicks. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and just copy those notes up to one of the congas, the high conga, and layer that kick with a high conga sound. Now the fun thing to do here is have a couple of variations of this pattern. And I'm going to add some hi-hats and other sounds to it in a moment, but just before that, just the fundamental part of the rhythm is this pattern and the fact that we've got a kick and a conga layered. I'm going to copy that clip down just using Command D and in the second version of that clip I'm going to take that conga and instead of it playing the high conga I'm going to program it so it plays the low conga or the well in this case the medium conga the middle conga and just switch between those two and having this variation is really important you need some kind of pattern to switch between two pitches of a percussion part. I guess we could do a third one and with this one I'm going to go to the low conga. So now I've got three versions of the same thing, one with a high conga, one with a low conga and one with a middle conga. Okay, let's stick with the high conga and I'm now going to show you a really cool way to program 
uh, which I call deconstructive programming. It's very, very simple. We just go into draw mode and for the, in this case, for the clav, I'm just going to click down and drag the mouse over and just draw a line of sixteenths. That's going to give me a sixteenth pattern. Now, that's a bit much. So what I'm going to do now is go in and just delete a few notes. I've taken that long line of clavs and I'm just going to just take off one or two of them to kind of break up the pattern. And I'm going to do the same thing with the snare and get another kind of characteristic sound that you'll hear in a lot of Duke, which is a quite busy snare pattern. And I'm just going to deconstruct it in the same way, just kind of take out some of those snares. And I'm just doing it randomly. I'm not really planning this, just but you get this really nice kind of sense that you've got quite a busy pattern there. So there we go, I've got a nice kind of energetic little pattern going on. And I didn't really think too much about where those snares were because I drew in a whole line and then just deleted one or two here and there to break up the monotony to kind of, you know, give space inside the beat. And we've got this nice kind of offbeat pattern now, um, which is quite skippy and quite energetic, very, very uh, characteristic of the Duke sound. Now, quickly, before I move on to the vocal, uh, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to make sure all, I'm going to make the fixed grid uh, 1 over 32. OK, and I'm very, very quickly going to shorten all the notes and add some groove. Now, I shorten the notes because I want to show you the groove that I'm going to add here. And when there's 16th notes, sometimes you can't see it. For, so for this tutorial, it's a little bit easier for me to change the 16th notes, uh, 16th notes <laughs> to 1 over 32. OK, I'm going to go into the groove pool. I'm going to hit the groove hot swap button here. And this is going to take me into Ableton's uh, Groove Pool, the, uh, the Groove Templates rather, which are, I'm going to choose one to go into the Groove Pool. I'm going to go into the Hip Hop folder. And down here, there's one called Root Down, Roots Down even. I'm going to double click on that. That drops that down into the Groove Pool. Now, that groove is affecting this clip. And you can hear the swing on the beats. Now, the reason I changed the 16th to 1 over 32 notes is that I, if I hit Commit, you'll be able to see the groove. So I've just hit commit and you can see where the notes are now. See the short notes and we've got little spaces in between them and it shifted some of the notes just off the beat and given us this nice swing to the beat. Now, of course, if you kept them on 16th notes, it wouldn't matter. I just purely just to show you in this video, it's a little bit clearer when they're shorter MIDI notes. So there's my Duke footwork, post dubstep, whatever you want to call it, beats. Let's do this vocal then. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just with the start and end point of the sample, I'm going to move them slightly further forward, just so that I can kind of trim out uh, the little bit of dead air at the beginning of the sample. So when the sample starts, um, I know I'm right at the beginning of that vocal line. And inside the clip, and I've set up a two bar clip here, I just changed the length of the clip, which is down here on the left. I'm gonna set up and program 16th notes again in a very similar pattern to what I did with the kick. Remember a couple of moments ago, we had a, a, a gap of two 16ths in between each kick, predominantly in that, um, in that drum clip. So I'm gonna do something pretty similar here, just have that running through the whole of those two bars. And again, straight away, we've got, if I put that with the beat. Let's turn that down a bit for a moment. Now, of course, the vocal line at the moment is only playing this really the, the, the kind of intro, the start of the, of the vocal. So let's, let's mess with this now. And just by using the start value here, I'm just going to move that start point in. And working with the release value, and this is on volume envelope here, um, I can extend the end of that sample so that even though the MIDI note stops short, the sample plays to the end just by bringing that release value out. So I can get a tight kind of sharp note with a, 
a fast release or an open release where we hear the whole sample. So there are hundreds of different possibilities there in terms of where that start point is. And that's something that we can automate over time. Let's put this into a rack. I'm going to right click and hit group and then just open up the macro controls and MIDI map the start value to macro one and the release value on volume envelope to macro two. And now I've got my MIDI controller set up next to my computer here. I'm going to come out of map modes and then hit MIDI and uh, map those two uh, macro controls to my MIDI controller here. So now I've got those two, if I just reach over here, there we go. And uh, there we go, I'm twiddling around on my MIDI controller now. And I can just work with those two values. Let's just play that. This would probably sound a bit cooler if I uh, put some effects on here. So let's add a bit of reverb. So all these parameters, of course, if I go over into a range view, we can automate them. And if I go to instrument rack, and we've got uh, sample start and volume envelope release ready to automate. So I can change them over time. I can draw in different values so that sample opens and closes uh, along to my tune. Anyway, you can learn loads of cool stuff like this at pointblankonline.net. Don't forget to check all the free content on our YouTube page and on our blog as well. And uh, I'll be back again next time to uh, show you more little cool tricks with Ableton Live for Point Blank. Okay, peace.